So hello everybody and welcome. How y'all doing today? Hope you're all doing good, fine, and well. No doubt you've noticed that the background is different and that it's not a green screen or any kind of artificial uh, background. No, I am in a different place entirely. I've been going a long time, I know. Even before my most recent departure, or you haven't seen me for a couple months, I was very sporadic in my posting. I wasn't putting a lot of content up for about the past six months. There was a reason for that. Uh, I'd been having health problems. My health had been uh, tanking significantly, uh, especially since my return from overseas to America oh, almost five years ago. It's been going precipitously downhill. It turns out I uh, suffer from an autoimmune disorder and totally undiagnosed and it just been getting worse and I was at risk for a whole bunch of issues so uh, that had been causing me a lot of problems when I finally got the diagnosis I had to make a lot of changes to my diet and uh, lifestyle and when I did what was a Turn around. I felt so much better. I felt like I did when I was living overseas. Even better in some instances, in some ways. And it was great. I felt like I had a new lease on life and got a new job offer in a different state. It was a pretty good job. Um, required me to have to move a considerable distance, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know? Especially when you're getting up to my age, you know? You don't get a lot of. Uh, great or even good job offers. Employers don't want to hire somebody in their 50s. Uh, you're too old. You uh, you got too much experience. You're overqualified. We don't think you'll stick around for very long. And of course, if you do actually apply for the jobs that you're not overqualified for, they don't want to hire you then either. Because again, you're too old. You're going to want too much. Maybe we can hire two or three college graduates. Uh, fresh out of uh, university indoctrination center and pay them uh, what we would pay you. So, eh, why hire you, right? So, I felt lucky. Felt good. That was a couple months ago. Uh, and even though I had, that was about when I, my health had really started to recover and I felt like making content again, uh, I had, then at that point, I had too much going on with organizing my move and getting ready to move and it was just like such a pain in the butt I couldn't find housing because you can't find housing in many cases until you're actually there I had the same problem when I was living overseas I tried to get housing back in America remotely it was impossible you have to actually be there boots on the ground where you're gonna be or you're not finding nothing so I made all my arrangements, did everything I needed to do, you know, turned off all of this, all of that, suspended this service, that service, packed all my stuff, got everything ready, and I made my move, and I was, I was, I was, I was like so excited, I'm feeling so good, man, I'm feeling so positive, I'm feeling so amped, I'm feeling so pumped about the future, you know, I got everything set, I got enough of everything, uh, that I need. Um, I'm good on funds. I'm good on everything. I've got everything planned where I'm going to stay. Uh, I start work X date. It's great. It's great. It's great. So I arrive and uh, I move into my uh, temporary domicile, which I had arranged for like a month. Uh, Cost an arm and a leg, by the way. Um, so what? You know, we start work. Uh, you know, next week. I want to arrive a week early, you know, get to. Uh, Good and situated, get a feel for the place. Um, everything was going fine. Everything was going wonderful. Until it <sighs> wasn't. And now, of course, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So, I wanted to just, you know, get to know the area a little better. It's a small area, small town. And I, I just went out for a walk. Went out for a brief walk. Uh, I went out. I, I don't do a lot of walking, honestly. Uh, but uh, for, uh, for some reason, I felt good. I felt good that day. I wanted to go out for a walk, uh, get some air in my lungs. I was just feeling so good. I was feeling great. So I'm out walking. I'm out walking. And, uh, you know, 
I get to a portion of the road where there's no sidewalk for some reason. Uh, so I was like, eh, I'll just keep on walking, right? I'll keep on walking. Yeah, there's no sidewalk. I'm not a feeble man. I can walk on, you know, some dirt. Then I started getting real uneven. It's like, eh, I'll probably cross the street, right? Because there was sidewalk on the other side of the street. And just as I'm thinking about crossing to the other side of the street, because the ground was getting uh, progressively more precipitous, um, I stepped in something. I don't know. There, there was a, a, like a divot in the ground, and my ankle twisted. I fell down. Big deal, right? Uh, yeah, big deal. The only problem with this fall is there was a metal spike sticking out of the ground that I didn't see. Uh, it went right through my leg. It wasn't pretty. Ow, my leg. <laughs> Same leg's bothering me right now. Um, wasn't particularly large, uh, but it um, doesn't really have to be. Went in, and I was like, what the hell? And I saw... And I uh, tried to pull it out. It was deep in the ground. I couldn't. I had to wrench myself off it. And I was like, oh, no. This is not good, right? I'm an older guy. Uh, infection's a big issue. Uh, rushed to get home as soon as I uh, possibly could. Uh, and though I couldn't, you know, I didn't have that budgeted in. But I uh, figured I'd be okay to, you know, go see a doctor and get it checked out. They, uh, you know, gave me a bunch of uh, antibiotics, I think a tetanus shot, uh, hooked me up to three IV, uh, three, three IV drips. Uh, after the tetanus shot, doctor uh, cut my leg open a little more and did some uh, manual compression to, you call it lancing, to remove any crap and debris. And, uh, you know, I was there for about five, six hours. And then they gave me a prescription for five days for an antibiotic. I went home. Well, not home, but back to where I was staying temporarily. And I, was, I seemed fine. I was like, okay, this is all right. I'm, I'm walking okay. It was just uh, it's minor, right? Did go in pretty deep. But, uh, you know, I'm walking okay here. And they gave me some uh, antibiotics for five whole days. And they already gave me a drip drippity drip thing I should be fine well it turns out that if you move to a podunk town which is where I am compared to where I was anyway uh, you're gonna get podunk doctors who were podunk uh, in intelligence as well it seems uh, so some problems the doctor left my leg wound open in the emergency room and discharged me with it open through various blankets and uh, coverlets over it. No kind of coverage for the wound. And as many of you probably know, hospitals are laden with bacteria, germs, viruses, many of which are highly resistant to antibiotics. So I picked up a secondary infection in the hospital I went to go to for the first infection I feared I might have, and I'd have probably actually been okay just treating it on my own. Uh, so fast forward 11 days, I'm thinking everything's okay, I'm thinking everything's all right, but then I'm getting real pain. I'm getting a lot of pain, and I'm thinking it's the tendon, right? Because the, the, the metal... Thing, the spike, it damaged my quadricep tendon and the doctor cut into it more to lance it. So I figured this pain I'm starting to feel, it's, it's, just, it's just damage to the tendon, right? But it proceeded to get worse and worse and worse. Now me, like the uh, stoic that I am, I figured, and because I'd been to a doctor, I fell for the, uh, you know, authority fallacy well you know a doctor looked at said i was good to go gave me some antibiotics they had me hooked up to three not just one not this true but three drips uh it can't be an infection they give me antibiotics <laughs> it's a doctor they gotta know what they're doing right wrong 
So, um, the pain just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And it eventually reached a crescendo at work. I was working, and uh, at about day, I would say, mm, 28, was it? It was 21. Day 21 after the injury. And I started shaking. Like, um, chills, but, I mean, it was like, I don't know, 73 degrees in the building? 75 even? Uh, it's like over 80 outside, but I was freezing to death. I couldn't stop shaking, so I had to leave. <laughs> I'm amazed I was able to drive home. And I get home, and I, I got a flashlight, and I looked at the, the healed over Lance, the where he had cut further, I mean, the initial injury plus the injury itself had been expanded in width so he could lance it more. And I looked, and it was odd because the color was wrong. It was all white, and I was like, wait a second, and, and very stretched and too wide. And I'm looking, and it, it looked like there was just a thin layer of skin at the top, and like what was underneath wasn't actually skin. It didn't have the right texture, color. And so I got a razor... Uh, you know, a little alcohol here, there on the razor. Uh, and I just touched it to the top of the stretched skin that it healed over. And boom! Out came this geyser. It wasn't, I didn't have to touch anything. It was like an explosion, like Krakatoa was going off. And, uh, you know, like Mount Vesuvius or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was just this explosion of purple black pus that smelled like shit literally smelled like shit i i mean there was shit coming out of my leg and it smelled like excrement and it was just pouring out it was i didn't have to do nothing this <laughs> is all over the place like what the uh you know like that little thing you turn and then out pops the clown well this was just an un you know clown clowns coming out non-stop of my leg Maybe not the best, uh, you know, analogy. But if you hate clowns, that would definitely be the best way to portray it. It was disgusting. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And it was like, whoa. To make a long story short, uh, I ended up in a septic shock. Uh, and here we are over a month later. Uh, I nearly died. and nearly lost my leg. Um... I'm just getting back to walking. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, you see the cane back there, maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's been a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. So now I lost my job, obviously. They have no uh, <laughs> obligation to wait a month plus for, uh, you know, somebody who... Uh, has an illness to come back to work. It's not like a disability or something, and they hire you knowing you're disabled, so... And it's not like it happened at work. Um, and, you know, the, the hospitalization costs so much money, and... Uh, I mean... I'm broke! <laughs> No job. In a couple of weeks, I'll be living in my car. So that's lovely. Uh, what a wonderful twist of luck and fate. So I went from essentially being set, everything set up for me, to uh, I'm going to be homeless. Well, I guess living in your car isn't homeless. I, you live in your car. I, <laughs> I like to barely walk. The leg itself, the infection is gone. But so was a lot of muscle also. It was really bad. Um, so the infection uh, necrotized a lot of the uh, tissue uh, and tendon muscle. Uh, I'm going to be a while recovering from this. Uh, I should be in hospice care, honestly, but, you know. So that's what I've been doing, and that's why I've been out of uh, commission. I mean, they had to... The, Hook my leg up to some like drainage machine that was sucking the pus out on a regular 
uh, basis. It, it wasn't fun or pretty or... <laughs> and I may have had years cut off my life if any of you know anything about, uh, you know, dealing with a sepsis or... This, this has not been good. This, this has been a nightmare. So, yeah. I don't know, is there a moral to this story? Don't take risks. Don't move for work. Uh, be more careful where you step. Um, always stay on a sidewalk. Even sidewalks are screwed up. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in a couple weeks. Um, been doing research into uh, car life, van life. Apparently, there's a bunch of people out there who are nomadic in nature and they will um they'll live in their vehicle and then like during the day they'll do like door dash and shit like that to make money and since they have no rent it's very easy to save i don't know about that um but uh i'm definitely going to be living in my uh car Oh, man, oh, man. The cost of this injury is not losing your leg. It would have been cheaper for me to just have him uh, lop it off. Then I could have got a whole bunch of benefits, probably. <laughs> I could have got a free new leg, too. But, uh, well, you know, it's carbon fiber. But, no, no. Oh, uh, that would have really been the easy way, I think. I don't know. Oh, so that's what's been going on. Um, I tried to stream a little earlier. This connection here is not good enough. I streamed on my Instagram, but nobody watched. I'm a has-been nobody. Nobody cares. <laughs> I hardly even care anymore. Like, what bad, mm, is that luck? I mean, that is, that is just chance. That is just bad chance, like chance. Bad shit happens. People get whacked in the head by meteorites, hit by buses. I guess I'm lucky to be alive, but I sure don't feel like it. I don't know what I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna stay. Uh, mm, was out earlier, now that I'm able to hobble around, measuring my back seat to see if I can remove the yeah, so there's enough room I can turn my, uh, if I remove one of my seats, I can turn the back of my car, half of it into a bed, and then get a, a portable stove and a propane tank, and I can cook, uh, like, out of my trunk in my car. Um, then I can um, get, like, a cooler good cooler, a little bit of ice, meh, don't have to worry about food, then something to hold potable water, then Planet Fitness membership, so it can take showers and all, but I mean, and then you wash your clothes at a laundromat, and then I'd have to make window covers, uh, stealth camp at night, like park at Walmarts and shit, <laughs> and then, you know, I'll find work somewhere. Uh, it's not that they don't want to uh, take me, but they already hired somebody to fill my position once my uh, leg guy couldn't work. They needed somebody immediately. And it was a good position. Good positions don't stay open long. I asked them, hey, wait a month or two? <laughs> no. That's reality. She's a harsh, mist harsh mistress. Well, with the medical bills and... Several months of, um, you know, housing that is just temporary, so costs three times as much as an apartment would. I'm broke. So anybody out there has any thoughts or can offer any kind of assistance or any ideas? Uh, I want to be living in my car. I will, of course, because, you know, what choice would I have? But... Uh, Talk about bad um, juju. I should have stayed. I should have stayed in Phoenix. I should have known. Oh, it's, it's a good opportunity. Well, it's got to end up being crap. 
Ah, uh, not like you could foresee falling down, though. Ah, uh, injuring yourself. Anyway, um, be looking for your comments. And uh, hope to hear from you all soon.